Hey, Crystal, it's Adam Farkas along with Gretchen. How you doing? Crystal! Hello there. Hi. This is how gonna, are you guys? This is going to be the most I've talked to you probably in I don't know how long. And is that that's sad. That is sad. I need to fix that. That is very sad. We need to do that Seco idea you had. We do. We do. So, so Crystal, I, I was telling everyone about our big adventure. <laughs> <laughs> um, Adam and Crystal's an big adventure. adventure. Our, our big adventure. Actually, I have pictures. I have pictures here. Wait, let me put up the pictures. So. Oh, I haven't even seen those. Yeah. That's cool. So, so I have a picture of, of you showing off um, and giving a big demo here. I guess this was the one in LA. Um, so it was a fun thing. So Crystal and I went on the road. I was telling everyone about it. Uh, going out uh, uh, with an unrestricted grant from Oculus to to try to you know teach people all about dry eye. Um, and so, you know, Crystal gave two really great lectures. One was just kind of a, 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 a real kind of lecture with you know, PowerPoint and everything. And the a second one, one? A like, you know, a lecture. As opposed lecture. to a fake as, a, as opposed to like, like you're seeing on the screen right a now. Workshop. Everyone, a workshop. Everyone gathering around. But it was really fun. So we had two really, two really fun nights. So Crystal, thanks, thanks for doing that. That was actually really entertaining. Um, and, and I think even I learned a lot, even though I was distracted in the back. Remember, oh, in this, this age of Trump, don't use the word, we had a fun night. <laughs> hey, Adam, I feel like you're getting a second wind. About two hours ago, I was worried about you. I thought, I don't think you're going to be there in two hours. But, but so, you're I am, looking better. You're not quite as pale. You're, I know. I, I looked at myself. Much, I, don't think. I looked at myself. I'm like, I got to do something. So I ran out of here, and I just loaded myself full of every single drug I had in the house. So <laughs> Did a few lines. Yeah, I'm to set. totally good. <laughs> <laughs> oh my I gosh! I assume so. I, I think it's, it's starting to kick in for you. Yes, no, yeah, I'm definitely feeling better. So you're you're actually giving the talk uh, on it's it's a very similar one that you did for your first hour when we did it on the road, right? About uh, demystifying the diagnosis. It is. It's about it's about the diagnosis, and and quite honestly, I have come to believe that this is the core of everything. Um, you know, patients come in day after day after day, patient after patient, and they've been told they have dry eye disease, and they've been told to do tears, and they've been from one doctor to another. They're frustrated by the trial and error approach, and what has created different outcomes for me is the fact that I've, I've just drawn a line in the sand and said, I'm not doing this anymore. From now on, we're going to take the time necessary to break down those underlying etiologies and figure out what is the real problem here and stop calling it dry eye. But is there enough water, oil, allergy, inflammation, bacteria, lid function, something systemic, something environmental? And I tell them in the first minute, I'm going to do tests in every one of these categories. And whatever's positive, I'm going to pair it with a treatment that I know works because I've seen it work over and over again. And it just becomes this beautiful equation. Now, the diagnosis is not enough alone because if you don't have the ability to show them, it, it, the message is not going to land. So they have to see it. They have to understand why you're asking them to do things. And then it creates compliance. And the compliance creates the outcomes. It's it's not anything magical. It's really just convincing the patient and, and figuring out what's wrong, convincing them to do what you ask, and then the outcomes will come, the referrals, the growth, the revenue. And it's just I've seen it happen in real life, and I'm so excited by it, and I'm excited to share that with other doctors. Sure. And, Crystal, one, one of the things that I picked up from your lecture, too, was how systematic you were about it. So you pick one diagnostic test and use it well for each etiology of ocular surface disease. And so that, that to me was a really important point. So you're, you're really going about it in a, in a systematic way that I haven't seen a lot actually in other lectures before. So Crystal, this is the off-camera cynic. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so, when, when does dry eye become dry eye disease? Hmm. Well, I think it's a disease from the beginning because uh, it's progressive. And if you do nothing and you let that, that inflammatory base continue, it's going to cause atrophy of the, of the lacrimal gland, atrophy of the meibomian glands. And when you're in that progressive state, it's a disease. So I, I tell patients from the beginning when they walk in, we're not going to cure anything. Not today, not down the road. What we're going to do is figure out the formula to create stability for you, to keep you from progressing, and to quiet your symptoms. So, so if the patients come in asymptomatic, they didn't come in to complain about dry eyes, uh, do you then guide them 
to, toward what what the symptoms would be for dry eye to let them know this is what they have? I absolutely do. So even my my routine exams, they are in store for it because once you have this mindset, it, it is impossible to turn it off. I get behind the soot lamp and I'm automatically looking at the lashes, looking at that lid margin. Is there telangiectasia? Is there myvamian stasis? Is there scurf? And everything about it. Is it thick and scalloped? And then I go to the tear film and see what's in there before I ever hit the cornea. And once that's part of your thought process, it's impossible to do a routine exam with someone who doesn't have complaints and not see it if it's there. So how I approach that is I take the pictures and I show them so that they know what's our status right now. And, and a lot of times I'll say, you know, all these people who are referred to me for dry eye, they'd give anything to be in your shoes right now and to be able to go back in time and do something differently so that it would change their overall outcome. So I want to give you that chance. Um, and I show it to them, and I ask them to implement simple things because I know they're not going to do a laundry list worth of, of homework when they have mm-hmm. no symptoms. But I need them to be educated on it. I need them to see it, and it, it typically works well. And sure. at least at that point, if they have symptoms down the road, they're not going to think I missed it. Um, right. They're, they're going to remember the conversation. They're going to come back to me instead of going to someone else. Crystal, you were talking about the importance of imagery. What what types of testing do you run through? And, and imagery oh, that, to show the patients. It, I have this beautiful um, sequence of, of tests. And what I do, I use the 5M primarily. And I have it in my exam room. So I... I have the patient in their chin rest. I'm doing slit lamp. I slide the 5M over. I take pictures. I slide it back. I put dye and I slide it back, back and forth. So on a dry eye eval, I collect um, tear meniscus height so I can determine their water level. I do a non-invasive tear breakup time. So that's related to oil. And then I do um, interferometry so I can see the color in their tears, which is related to oil. Then I do... um, What's next? Oh, tear film dynamics. So it shows the patient all the junk in their tears, and this is a very effective patient education tool oh, because really? they are disgusted by it. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty gross. <laughs> they think they should be pristine, and they're not pristine. And, and I just let them be disgusted about it because that is a motivation to do what I ask them to do. And then I start with my pictures, and I do high mag uh, imaging of the lower lid margin, the upper lid margin, um, the conge, the sclera, a redness scan. And then I go and, and put lysamine green in and do pictures of the, the conge and then the lower lid margin again for the line of marks, the upper lid margin for lid wiper epitheliopathy. Then I put fluorescein in and I am taking pictures of any corneal staining, but I'm also doing a video. And this is another powerful um, motivator for patients is for them to see this video and see their tears breaking up. And also I can slow it down and show them their partial blanks. And this is critical. They, they just, it's hard for them to get their head around sure. that, that this would even exist or, or how to fix it. And then the last thing I do is my biography. And I do the upper and lower lids, and I compare it on a scale of, of normal and abnormal form so they can see exactly where they lie. I used to ramble on with a laminated image trying to sell yeah. it, and it's so much easier to, to take their picture and slide it along the scale, and in 10 seconds or less, they get it. Right. And, and then to tell them that we can't reproduce these glands, that they're gone forever. So That's pretty powerful. For me, it's... It is powerful, and and a lot of doctors will stop me and they'll say, "Well, how many minutes does this take?" How that long is just what I was going to ask you. Yep. How long does all that well, take from the patient that's in the chair it, when you go through all of this? Mm-hmm. Now, this is a dry eye eval, so this is not a routine exam. This sure, is bringing sure. them back for a visit specifically for this, and I do this one time and one time only with the patient. Um, it doesn't take me that long to acquire everything. So the tech will acquire everything down to the dye, but I don't want her to put dye in because I want to see the surface without the dye. Sure. So then I finish up with those last with the lysamine green and the fluorescein and the myography. Um, to gather everything, the tech time plus mine, it takes about 12 minutes. And then it's just patient education thereafter. I mean, I spend more time at the 5M than I do the actual slit lamp. I come back to the slit lamp to do expression. 
um, and just to get a different view of it. But that's it. So it, it it's it's all about the patient. I tend to book my drive out last one before lunch and last one in the afternoon so I can spend whatever time necessary. But what I tell doctors is stop thinking about how many dollars you're going to make per minute in this dry eye eval because it is not about that one visit. It is about what it generates thereafter because it creates the compliance. Right. And then they will they will they will buy the vitamins you want them to buy. They'll do Lipaflow or they'll they'll do whatever treatments you recommend. And you're not manipulating them. You're re- recommending what's right for them. But without this tool of being able to take the time to show them, it feels like a sales pitch. And I don't want that in my exam room. Right. And I know right. a lot of other ODs aren't comfortable with it. So it eliminates that environment. It makes it about them and their specific case. But those few minutes you spend in the dry eye eval generate residual income forever. I have patients that I've looked at their charts, and they have bought vitamins, and I have 92 bucks for every two months, and they have come in like clockwork for two years. And I'm like, gosh, it all came from that first dry eye eval. Right. So it doesn't take that long, especially not for the return and the growth that you'll see in the practice because of the outcomes and the referrals. Right. Hey, Crystal, you know, we don't we don't have cope hanging over us here. So this is a purely commercial <laughs> space that we're in. Thank God. Um, so I, I love it in here, Craig, because we can say whatever we want. I want to talk to you about the 5M for a second, because, you know, obviously Oculus is a sponsor. But what was interesting to me about the course when I saw you do it is you're the only person I've ever seen that actually has a report named after her. Um, oh, so that's end, an honor. At, at the end of this test, right, this this comprehensive series of tests, it spits out a, a single report. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, do you want to tell everybody about that? Because I think it makes the, the point that you're making that, you know, you can show patients stuff like this, this one, you know, this one document that they get. Yeah, I'd love to. So how this came about, let me give you a little backstory if I have a minute. Um, I was co-developing the dry eye protocol with, with John Shackett for Vision Source, and we just kept running into the same stumbling blocks of, this is great, but it takes too long. It takes too long. It takes too long. So I, I went to Oculus and I said, you guys have an amazing machine. It's, it's incredible, but it's not very user-friendly. It takes okay. me too long, and I, I, it, it's, I just keep stumbling over myself trying to use it. Can we work together on this? And so I redesigned the, the software as far as how it works and going from right eye to left eye, left eye to right eye, and doing it in an order where your – your future test won't be obstructed by your current one. So here's what I mean by that. You do tear meniscus height first because if they start tearing later, it would throw off that reading. Sure. And so making it very intuitive so it would be fast, but that was only half the story. You needed to be able to give the patient something. So number one, I'm able to put up this collage picture of nine pictures, and it tells them the story. I can say, we talked about water, oil, allergy, blah, 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 blah. Well, let's look at it. Your water line's a little bit low. Look at this lid margin. Look at how these glands are puckered up and, and they're stagnant. They're backed up like little pimples. And see this video where there's not enough oil getting in the tear film. That's why there's no color. And look how your tears are breaking up so quickly here and you're having to blink too frequently. And look at the damage it's doing to these glands long term. Look at all this junk floating in your tears. It's causing this inflammation, this redness, and this staining. So I can do that in one screen, have all the pictures up, and then over to the right, assess it all, and print the report. And what the the report does, it's called the Crystal Tear Report. And the doctor is, is sitting here looking at it. At the top, there's a pie graph, and green is green's good, right? Green's normal. <laughs> Yellow is mild. Orange is moderate, and red is severe. And so in this pie graph, it has all those categories, and it's red if it's obviously, according to the results, red is severe. So then it has each category in that order. So let's say, for example, that oil and inflammation were red. So the first category underneath that is oil, and it shows all the tests that were done to, to call it red, to call it severe, and what those results were, and the treatment specific to that category. So it's very difficult for me to describe it to you without you being able to right. see it, but it's a series actually, of Actually, I want to see it. I yeah, was thinking I want to cool. come I, hang I, out yeah. with you. I'm gonna, I'll put it up later, actually, today so you can see what it looks like, because to me, like, this is the interesting thing. Oculus's instruments do a lot. Like, if you look at these things or look at a Pentacam, it's like, oh, my God, it's right in the name, Penta. <laughs> um, and, 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 but it, being able to actually get all that information into one place is absolutely critical. And I think, when, I'll show you the report later, Gretchen, it really looks cool. And the patient, I think, can really understand it. So, you know, 
Well, and one, you get, the, the key is being able to glance at it and get the overview. So you glance at the first pie graph and you see the overview of every condition and what your status is. Then you see each condition individually and what the individual test results were, the treatment specific to it. After that, Gretchen, is a definition of every test that was done because we want the patient to understand what we looked at. And then the last page is a summary of all the treatments. So the reason for that is you might have omega-3s listed under inflammation and oil, and then we want a summary at the end where they can just look at it and say, all right, here's what I have to do. Yes, Crystal, so and you can do follow-up reports, too, so that you can check their progress and show it to them as they go along. Uh, speaking of treatment, uh, well, what about mechanical, uh, where it's there? A, a patient with a poor, poor, I'll give you three examples. A patient with a poor blink rate, that's one. Mm -hmm. A patient uh, with uh, exophthalmus, which is two. And the, a patient uh, with nocturnal lagophthalmus, where they don't shut their eyes after plastic surgery. Some people have, have, have had lid, uh, lid surgery to make themselves more beautiful, now can't close their eyes, and especially shows up uh, when they're asleep. So how do you manage these Absolutely. people? Well, and I'll give you a fourth one, conjunctival chalasis. So a lot of these that you talked about, I can show them on the 5M with my fluorescein video. So I take that video and I tell the patient, I'm, I say, you blink as much as you need to. I'm just getting set up back here. Well, in reality, I'm videoing their behavior. Mm. Then we go back, we slow the video, and when they have fluorescein in and you're doing this and they close their eyes all the way, the screen goes completely black. So it's so easy to see when it's a full blink versus a partial blink. And then when they do a partial blink, it also leaves that demarcation line in the fluorescein. So I can show them their partial blinks. I can show them when there's central staining, 3 to 9 o'clock, where it's, it's because of that exposure. Um, or if there's inferior staining, maybe it's because of lag ophthalmos. I also will lay them back and do the core blacky light test just to see if there's any light coming through. But a lot of times that won't show up, and it comes down to history. And that's one of my main questions is how do you feel when you first wake up? The clock goes off, you're still in bed, are you thinking about your eyes? And if the answer is yes, I don't care what my tests show, they're going home with a sleep mask. <laughs> because the chances are, unless there's a ton of blepharitis there, they're probably um, sleeping with a gap or lag ophthalmos. And then as far as... Uh, yeah, plastic surgery, even Botox, I'll have patients who it's affected their blank. And then the conjunctival chalasis, that ends up being a diagnosis of exclusion. We diagnose it, but we don't always know that it's causing the symptoms because so many people present with it that don't have symptoms. Right. So if I have a patient who we've got them to the point where they're feeling good, but they have a, a lot of over-tearing, epiphora, then and a lot of conjunctival chalasis present, then it's kind of the last thing that I do is send them to a, to co-manage with a surgeon who can take care of that. Right. Crystal, have you considered um, writing all this up and, and submitting this for a peer review journal or do you use, or do you have any, any studies that you're using to support what you're doing moving forward? Because I think this is a little different from what other doctors are doing. Well, Gretchen, I just have so much time on my hands. <laughs> <laughs> I keep you busy. I keep you busy. <laughs> I got a long list here. Um, I would love to. I really would. And I think the the thing that has probably kept that from uh, being an item on my list is I'm just so passionate about trying to help doctors make this easier and make it real. You know, when I lecture, I, I don't get incredibly technical and and. Mm -hmm. I just want it to be applicable to them. And what I've seen over and over and over again is even when they're excited about it, even when they've already bought the equipment, there's still this stumbling block of implementation. And it's because of getting staff on board or just getting it right with their flow. And that's a lot of where my passion lies is real life. How do we make this work? And, and my latest project, which is consuming all of my minutes right now, um, in February, February the 10th, I'm starting a dry eye institute. And so basically it's going to be a retreat where they come to my office, and we're talking about five doctors at a time, not a lot of people. So one week in a month, five on Friday, five on Saturday, 
And we start out with the fundamental basics of just, you know, an hour on diagnosis, an hour on treatment, so they get this formula. And then we do two live dry eye evals. I have no idea who they are. They were referred by one of the 30-some doctors that send patients to me, and we walk through it applying this formula. And then we spend the rest of the time creating um, specific implementation plans that are, are according to their offices, their square footage, their number of exam rooms, their number of texts, their scheduling templates. So very personalized they to what they need. Kit. Yes, yeah. yes. Well, it's turnkey, and they leave with a kit that has everything needed for uh, exam tools, patient education tools, informed consents for advanced procedures, um, lab templates for, for blood work to order, billing tips, everything is paper and digital resources, and then samples of everything out there, um, and really an, an advocacy networking system that's in place for them ahead of time where they have people who are accountable to them in the industry and and discounts already in place for them. So I just want it to be turnkey. I want this not to be so hard. Right. No wonder and, you're busy. Yes, and do you do you have a URL that you would like to give us, a website? We can, I, we can plug it for you right now. Look at you, Adam. As a matter of fact, I do. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, gained a new skill yeah. because you know how uh, it, <laughs> emergency creates uh, creativity, yes. I guess. So I needed a website fast, so I learned how to build one. Oh, and my God. It's, <laughs> it's www.dryeye.institute. Right. So there is no com. It's dryeye.institute. Got it. I didn't know you could do that. Well, I went on WordPress, which is not for the the novice user. So oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> you can't just you can't <laughs> click on red or blue. You have to you have to have some code to tell it red or tell it blue. <laughs> Wow. Crystal, one so final job question. Job security for our web designer. <laughs> Before you say goodbye to us, one final question in honor of the baby boomers who are now moving into old age. Uh, is, is is the treatment that you take care of? Just getting age? better. <laughs> <laughs> is it is it age related? Uh, is there a, a, a cutoff where you say, you know, you have dry eyes, old guy? <laughs> but uh, is it worth uh, with the term time and effort? So, you know, we all used to look at it that way, that, that not only was it age-specific, but it was a woman's disease. Oh, and right. And there is no doubt that that image has completely shifted. And it, it's because of a lot of things. We've got more systemic conditions, which means we've got more medications with side effects. Um, but I think a lot of it is this visual demand. Well, look and at what we're doing here. How many devices do we have around us? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Right now, I've got like six in front of me. Uh, we need to come to you right now, Crystal, like Monday. I'm coming yeah. to you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let me tell you this. I'm working on this these slides right before you called. And in one slide, I have this 93-year-old patient, um, dear lady, one of my early patients with no glands almost no glands, and right next to it is a 46-year-old, the man that, great friend of mine, designed my logo 15 years ago, and he has nothing left. Oh, no. But he had no symptoms. He showed up on my schedule saying he'd been red for a couple of weeks, and that's the new face of dry eye. And what's scary about it is this fact that they don't have any symptoms, and they end up with no, I mean no, my bummy and glands left. Mm -hmm. And what are we going to do with these people for the next 30, 40, 50 years that they have, right. you know, to get through? So I think that we've, we're going to have an, an epidemic on our hands as these young children start out with devices, and they've got the iPad in front of them at, at five years old. Yep, yep. All right. Well, Crystal, thanks so much for doing this. Uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna actually put up a copy of the report uh, underneath this interview when I put it up on Odie Wire, uh, and a link to your website as well, so everyone can go check it out. Thank you. And this was awesome well, to talk with you, guys. Crystal. Well, thank you, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Thank you. Great we, talking to you, Crystal. Thanks. You at Seco. We will see you at Seco. See you at Seco. Yeah. Thank you, Crystal. Bye. Bye. Bye.